the um, Fulbright experience was quite an extraordinary one. And uh, I know people say that about many things that happen in their lives, but it, there, there was a, it was one of those angel moments in which somehow an angel comes and rescues you from distress. And uh, I've never forgotten that moment because the, the way it happened was I had been accepted at Harvard University. And I thought if you were accepted at Harvard, you will find your scholarship funds. Uh, my parents didn't have the money to send me to Harvard, and I didn't have the money. And, uh, and I figured the scholarship will happen. And once I heard I had been accepted, I started looking for the scholarship in many places. And, only to find out that uh, there was no scholarship available for me. And this wonderful woman, Mrs. Fisher, uh, noticed that I was tearing up. She sort of got a hold of me and said, well, uh, maybe there is, there is a light here at the end of this, your tunnel. The, uh, I have applied on your behalf for a Fulbright. Uh, scholarship and and I did not want to tell you because I did not know whether you were going to get it or not uh, I'm gonna hear on Monday and but it looks good and I got the Fulbright Fellow Award and uh, it was sort of in my mind it was the most generous enlightened miraculous act of generosity a country would have I had been at Harvard for two years and uh, I had been helping, the, at the time, one of the presidential candidates in Venezuela, helping them write speeches from Harvard. And I said, you know, you've just won the elections. This is going to be extraordinary. You're going to have such an incredible inflow of, of, of money that you can change the country completely. And he said, well, what would you do to change the country? I said, you know, I would start a Fulbright program in Venezuela. I would have start a massive scholarship program to take every young Venezuelan and offer them the opportunity to study anywhere in the world. I went back to Harvard, and six months later, the government of Venezuela announced the Gran Mariscal de Ayacucho program. Under that program, 100,000 Venezuelans went overseas with full scholarships. And all of a sudden, my experience was beneficiary to at least 100,000 Venezuelan and, and their families. So that's, I think, a Fulbright moment. And I honestly cannot think of monies better spent than allowing worthy individuals to go abroad, either US citizens, students to go overseas, or overseas students to come here and have that cultural exchange at a high, a highest level of intelligence and knowledge and um, ambition, intellectual and personal ambition, and the impact that has on, on the well-being of the world. To throw some numbers, you know, I spent, I returned to Venezuela as I needed to. I gave back to my country as much as I could. And eventually I discovered I couldn't give it anymore, and the country was taking away from me. And I decided to join the World Bank. And I managed their pension fund for 12 years, and then I started as an entrepreneur, as a woman entrepreneur, a company to manage uh, assets for institutions. And the company has become probably, arguably, the leading um, privately owned firm offering outsourced chief investment officer services. And uh, if when I go to calculate the investment that the United States made on me, I think at the time it was $2,500. And what I've given back to the country, not just to my own country of birth, Venezuela, but to the United States. The, you know, the companies that, that our group has founded with, along with my partners have contributed in taxes to the U.S. government over a billion and a half dollars, okay? We have employed 400 people over the last 30 years, 30, yeah, 29 years. We have distributed in salaries a billion dollars to Americans and people who live here. And we have distributed in capital gains to the shareholders in our firms a billion dollars and another billion dollar in dividends. 
So there are $3 billion that have gone to giving back to employees, shareholders, and, uh, and those have originated a billion and a half in taxes to federal and state government. That's the huge return on investment for $2,200, $2,500 Fulbright spent on me. So in terms of you know, return on investment, I cannot think of a better return on investment for those 30 some million dollars that, that, that the Fulbright want restored in the US budget. It's worthwhile.